All right. Hello, everybody. Hello. This is Dennis Navy Show, the Ego Cast. Which is what we're calling it right now. Provided that there's nobody else that has that name. <laughs> I hope not. I like it. I hope not either. I like it too. Uh, let's see. This is uh. Well, let's start with. Let's start with the uh, the white male tech world. Why capitalism needs an upgrade. <laughs> okay. Uh, this I got off of uh, CNN. Uh, when Frederick Hudson left prison in 2012 after serving four years on marijuana-related charges, which is bullshit. Everybody knows that. It's not actually on CNN. I'm, I'm editorializing here. He realized he had gained something more than his freedom. Insight into an overlooked consumer market. What? Uh, many inmates are stuck in an age before Instagram or Facebook, relying on envelopes and payphones to connect with family on the outside. Aw. That sucks. Aw. Fucking, so what? They're in prison. That's the purpose of prison. <laughs> there it is, the prison phone. Fucking, that's what you get in prison. I'm tired of this shit. Yeah. Fucking people in prison are there because they're being fucking punished. Don't they have cable, too? Ah, oh, fuck. Well, I... Nah. Ugh. Uh, so Hudson founded Piggy Only. I don't know if that's the way you're <laughs> supposed to say it, but it's spelled Piggy Only. Okay. A photo-sharing and low-cost phone call service that has already helped 50,000 incarcerated individuals connect with their loved ones maintain their ties to society, and remain a presence in their children's lives. Well, I mean, okay. All right, all right, all right. So what kind of prisoners are we talking about here? I mean, are we talking about people that are serving four years for marijuana-related charges? Or are we talking about prisoners who murder and rape? I don't know. What is the article? Well, it fucking doesn't say. That's, that's, man, that's the thing with this kind of shit, because it doesn't say what type of people this is. But, ugh, whatever. Uh, the story of Piggy Only is statistically unlikely, a disruptive technology created by a member of a disenfranchised community in order to solve a problem within that community. Disenfranchised community? They're talking about prisoners. People in prison. Yeah. The, uh, disenfranchised community? People that fucked up. That doesn't make you a disenfranchised community. That makes you a group of people that fuck up. What the, what the hell was that? I don't know. <laughs> Wait, what the, what's uh, the guy's name but, again? By the way, loving the new fucking soundboard. Yeah. Uh, the guy that, what, the the, the prisoner that yeah. came up with this? Frederick Hudson. Okay. And uh, what was the, what's the pig thing? Piggy only. What's what P-I-G-E-O-N-L-Y. Is... Piggy only. <laughs> <laughs> is that a pig grunt? <laughs> I hope. <laughs> There, there we go. That's a pig grunt. Maybe it's like uh maybe it's like uh 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 deliverance. The squeal like a pig. Oh. Piggy only. It's for, it's for prisoners. Squeal like a pig. Uh, <laughs> it is also a model for the type of entrepreneurship that can revive American capitalism, both inclusive and responsive to America's changing demographics. Uh, one of the great achievements of the civil rights and women's rights movements was that they unleashed an enormous pool of talent into the economic life of America. Desegregation and the women's movement broke down barriers to educate and employ education and employment and make our nation stronger by making it more competitive. Now, this is not the direction when I originally read this article that I thought this was going. No. Uh... Yet 50 years later, a narrow vision of capitalism once again threatens to leave many Americans behind. Our nation's failure to achieve equal educational opportunity has exacerbated race-based economic disparities and produced two starkly different American economies. Yeah, the people that go out and get a job and the people that sell drugs. Right. And the people that sell drugs make more money than the people that go out and get a job. And what, oh, maybe that's what this is about, because then people go to jail... And then they can use picky only so that they can <laughs> communicate and still run their drug trade from inside prison. Which I bet you is what the fuck is going to go on on that thing. I mean, it's... <laughs> <laughs> They're going to put a gun sound in there. Put a better gun sound in there. What is that, a 22? 
Um, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and while women have made strong gains in professional life, they remain dramatically underrepresented uh, under in many of the most profitable sectors. Silicon Valley is hardly the only place where this is evident, but addressing it here is crucial to turning the tide. But there's all sorts of women in fucking video games and shit like that. Yeah. You beat a game, you watch the credits, there's a bunch of women names in Laura there. Laura Croft. Yeah, Laura Croft. <laughs> Last year, there were eight states where zero Latino students took the advanced placement exam in computer science, and 11 states in which no black students took the test. In three states, not a single female student sat for the exam. Well, this is computer science. And what states were they? I mean... Oh, well, I don't know. It's got a link here. Let's see. I, I think it makes a difference of what states. I mean, what if the population of uh, certain minorities are not there? Of course they didn't take the test. Well, I mean... <laughs> What is what is what does that have to do with anything, man? There's a shit ton of people. I'm not saying an expert in every state, but I'm like uh, Utah or something doesn't. I don't know if they have a lot of minorities there. That's what I'm saying. Oh, uh, this article says of the approximately thirty thousand students who took the exam in 2013, only around twenty percent were female, according to the analysis, and a tiny three percent were Af African American. Just eight percent were Hispanic. Well, out of 30,000 people, what is that? 20% is 6,000. Yeah. 3% 3 is 300? 300? And 8% 8 is 800. Out of 30,000 people, what were the rest? How many Asians? Yeah. How many uh, Eskimo? <laughs> <laughs> the zero Eskimos took that test. Indians. Fucking uh, Native Americans, not Indians. Well, yeah, Indians. Yeah, Indians too. Good. Dot Indians. Feather Indians. Hindu. Both underrepresented, I'm sure. Fucking. Ugh. Anyways, going back to the fucking. It just news. seems like they're using too broad of a thing. Well, it's thirty thousand people that took the exam. So, six thousand of them were women. That's not a bad fucking number. When it all comes down, I mean, you look at the breakdown of society. Well, 52% of society is women. <laughs> <laughs> but they're, you know, soon to be And this was just in computer science. And this is just in computer, yeah, it's just in computer science, yeah. Not too many people are interested in that. What? No. 20,000? Well, I mean, <laughs> well, computer science is, is that's not, not like video making game. video games yeah. and shit like that. That's like... Bill Gates type crap yeah. coming up with new OS and shit like that. And that's fucking boring. Anyways, uh, it is no surprise then that 99% of venture capital funded startups in 2010 were funded by whites or people of Asian descent. Also a minority. <laughs> but we're not going to talk about that. I don't think they're a minority because, anymore. You know, Asians love computers and stuff. I don't think they're a minority anymore. <laughs> How's that? There's We're talking more. about the United States. Yeah. Oh, I'm talking about worldwide. Well, they worldwide. Well, if you want to go worldwide, probably can't even say the blacks are minority because it's all that. God damn, I sound so racist. <laughs> right. well, I can't wait for your emails. Uh, it is no surprise then that 99% of... Oh, shit. I read that already. <laughs> <laughs> to be sure, government can play a crucial role in leveling the playing field. Ah! Fucking government! Black president. Uh, but it can only go so far. No, you're not racist. The, <laughs> the leaders of the innovation economy can and should play their part in reviving capitalism by making it more responsive to a changing country's full range of widespread needs and more inclusive in the process. This is a practical demand such as as much as a moral one. How is it a moral demand? This moral this fucking equality through morality is bullshit. If you want to do something with your life, you do something with your life. It isn't my moral obligation to make sure that everybody gets their fair fucking share. I'm struggling to make my own goddamn I don't think way. I think you're looking at that wrong. It's the government saying it's their moral obligation to make sure everyone gets through. So the they're saying if everyone in the country is good because they made it that way, the whole country gets better that way. 
But the problem is... Yeah, but the world needs ditch diggers, too. And yeah, the problem is there are stupid people in the world. Lots who, of stupid who people! Who, who don't want to do anything except work at McDonald's or dig ditches, like you said. Underrepresented populations are uniquely prepared to do what their tech sector claims to do best. Innovate. Look at the App Store on any smartphone. There are thousands of programs to edit a photo or help you check the weather, but far fewer that exist to close the gaps in our society. What? 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 But that's what people fucking want. There are apps in there that close. The Angry Birds <laughs> bring this society together. <laughs> How many people like that? Uh, I think they're talking more about like educational programs. But I mean, there's a whole, there's an entire section. Of educate says education, yeah, well, and I can tell you right now, as a white Christian male, never looked at it because I don't give a shit about learning fucking German on my phone. I have looked at the educational stuff, and I have put some of it on my phone. A calculator? I didn't know the phone came with that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, like what? I don't. I can't think of it because I I get bored with them because they're they're stupid. Well, it's because educational apps are stupid. <laughs> but people use their fucking phones. you got to remember there's stupid people out there. Yeah, but people use their phones to edit a photo, which I think is a knock on women. And all of you women should be pissed because they're saying that. Well, and check the weather. Well, the top number one educational thing on my phone is kid preschool puzzles. Well, then there you go. It's targeted towards children. Yeah. And... I'm not letting It's when mommy and daddy you don't want to babysit the kids. They just throw the phone at them. Ooh, you're going to go there? <laughs> yeah, I am. All right, then. I agree. <laughs> Smart investors are looking at firms like Regali, which help immigrants send cash remittances back to their home countries. What? Uh, this, article, this article is confusing me. Well, smart investors are looking at firms like Regali, which help immigrants send cash remittances back to their home countries. Why? Isn't that a problem in this country? That we get people coming over here, and they send all their money overseas. That's not helping anybody. No. That's helping people overseas, but fuck them! You know? We fought hard. We... <laughs> People that created this country fought hard. I'll, I'll look like a racist, an asshole. That's fine, but I'm not going to look like an asshole that says we. I didn't do shit. <laughs> Fucking People fought and are still fighting hard for this country to be free and other countries to be free. And so people come over here to send their money back home. That's fucking bullshit. Uh, or Plaza Familia, a Latin-founded multilingual education software platform that helps parents track their children's school progress in their native language. Well, okay, I'm fine with that. that. That's yeah. fine. That's great. I think that's awesome. But yet again, it's dealing with children. Children are our future. Feed them. I mean, feed them well. <laughs> <laughs> uh, our firm, Kapoor Capital, invests in these companies and dozens of others that work to close gaps. We saw that startups like Pig Only, Piggy Only, were launched by entrepreneurs who identified an unmet need in the market as a result of their life experiences. Man, I think they should have led with the Plaza Familia one and fuck this Piggy Only because it's prisoners. Fuck them. They had their chance. They fucked their shit up. Uh, Silicon Valley tells an idealistic story of itself and the revolutionary role of, e of tech leaders in the 21st century economy. Tech innovation can and should expand wealth, uh, democratize access to opportunity, and build a um, meritocracy where talent matters most. However, we still have a long way to go. Well, I believe in that. Talent should matter most. It shouldn't matter if you're black or if you're white or if you're Hispanic. It should be based on your talent. Now they're talking my language. Well, maybe they should just... When when they you go into places, you put a bag over your head, just talk to you, and take you take a test. Ooh, like what is that? The voice where they just hear the person saying, and then they raise the curtain, and it's a fucking big fat person, I've and they're like, "Yeah, hey, we can't make a star out of you." <laughs> um, we will be there when companies like Piggy Only, Regali, and Plaza Familia, and their founders, African Americans, Latinos, women of all colors, and others historically excluded, are no longer the exception to the rule. 
Capitalism remains our nation's <laughs> operating system. The current version needs an upgrade. Investing in the people who are too often locked out and their ideas can advance our economy and our country to the next level. And I agree with that. I think that capitalism does need to have an overhaul. I think that the, uh, the, the practice of the people who are in power take all the fucking money and leave the scraps for the people who aren't, I think that's bullshit. I do agree with that. I agree with that wholeheartedly. But, you know, if you're going to attack white people, attack them in the right sense. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't say that it's because there's downtrodden people in the world and they have good ideas. I mean, it's like fucking Bigfoot. If Bigfoot really existed, we'd fucking know about it. If black people and women had great ideas, we'd fucking know about it. And many of them do. And I think it's stupid to say that there are so few people with great... I've got great ideas. I'm a white guy. And nobody's ever heard of any of them. You want to know why? Because at their heart, they're stupid fucking ideas. And I know that. And that's why I haven't made my Sheldon's Weekly Update fucking app that tells you everything that Sheldon does during his week. Because it's a dumb fucking idea. Who would fucking need that? Nobody. People are making shit that people don't fucking need. All of the candy crushes out there in the world. What's this, Sheldon? What the fuck are you talking about? No, Alright, you know on Big Bang Theory, Sheldon has his fucking schedule. Uh, no. Every night is a certain night. Well, you don't fucking watch that no. show. It's, uh, it's inaccurate. Nevertheless. I don't watch that show. <laughs> inaccurate. It, because you're a super geek. They get their facts wrong. Yeah, Jesus. I'm not getting into this argument right now. All right. The big re I told you before, the big reason why I hate that show is I hate Leonard. What's wrong with Leonard? That phony voice that that actor puts on <laughs> is horrible. I just want to <laughs> punch him in the face. <laughs> and no way in hell well, the blonde next door would ever hang out with them. Well. Unless they were paying her. Which they probably are. Well, you know. She gets paid to do the show. There you go. Well, she dated him for a while. I thought they were dating still. No, I thought they broke up. I, I, I'm pretty sure they I broke up. I think they're back together. Anyways. Also, I just think it's funny. Sheldon's gay in real life. <laughs> He's got a girl. Is he really? Yeah. Really? I think I read that somewhere. I didn't know that. Well, allegedly. Let's say allegedly. Yeah. I don't... <laughs> Unless you not have something to factually anything, base, back that I'm up. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with him being gay. I no, just think it's no, funny no, no, he's dating. They're, they're making him date a woman on the show. I'm just saying. I don't want to get sued. Why could? Why can't he date a guy in the show? Too? Why can't his character be gay? I don't get that. Well, I think his char I think the angle they're going with with his character is that he's asexual. So now he's not asexual, and they're making him date a girl. Well, I think, don't think that they're making him date a girl. I think he wants to date a girl. It is Blossom. But she is fucking a hot bitch, though. I'm horny as all hell. Expecting it. You hear about her in real life. Well, she believes in breastfeeding her kids until, like, they're their teen years or something like that. Nice. Or not teen years, but, like, I think ten years old or something. It's fucking weird. Yeah, that picture of fucking, what was that magazine? It was us, or not us, uh, Newsweek or whatever. Time. Was it Time? That had the little kid sitting on the fuck or standing on the stool, <laughs> sucking on his mom's tit. That was a fucking weird ass cover. No, I think that's fucking weird too. I don't think that you should breastfeed until the kid's ten. I don't know when you're supposed to stop, but supposedly it's good. <laughs> uh, also in racism news. Uh, Edinburgh, Scotland. This is from flashnews.com. Uh, Flash News. No, from what? Where in Scotland? Edinburgh. <laughs> <laughs> I figured you were going to do that and then a zipper. Um, wolves aren't just hot in the movies right now. They're top dog in the wacky world of furries, too. Like I said, racism news. Uh, while women pine for werewolf Jacob Black in, tw <laughs> in Twilight, those involved in the furry fetish community, where people get sexual pleasure from dressing up in animal costumes, also yearn for the species. According to journalist Harmon Leon, people who sport wolf suits are at the top of the chain within the bizarre subculture. 
He would know, since he once infiltrated a furry con convention to get the scoop while decked out in a pig mask and bear ears. <laughs> Which I thought was priceless. Man bear pig. <laughs> that, that was great. <laughs> Much like the wolves in Twilight, Leon says furry wolves stick to their own kind. Quotes. They hardly socialize with other animals. Quotes. So there's clicks. <laughs> And those who are into, say, Care Bear furries are relegated to the bottom of the pack. And that doesn't make any sense. You'd figure the Care Bears would get all the ass. Yeah, because they fucking have the Care Bear story. <laughs> <laughs> the wolves seem to dominate the furry porn market, too. God. <laughs> Leon recalls seeing tons of strange, explicit illustrations of wolves, in quotes, Performing oral sex on unicorns at the gathering. <laughs> now let's talk about unicorn oral sex for a moment. Now is no. that like is that like sucking on the horns? Are we horn sucking here, or is it like, you know, are you actually fucking, you know? The well, question is, is the, is the guy is it a guy in the unicorn suit or a girl? Yeah, well that's the fun thing with it. I'm <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Well, they had that fucking, <laughs> on, uh, what was it, CSI, yes. where they were looking into the dude that got shot, uh -huh. Curry. Did you ever see that episode? Nah. And uh, they had the, the, the big popular furry was a, a cat costume, where it was like, it had fucking titties, and it was wearing like a bikini, <laughs> like the little pussy. And fucking, they took him in for questioning, and they're like, you have to take your mask off. And he's like, no, I don't, I have to keep my mask on. And they're like, no, you gotta take your mask off because we have to see who you are. And he took it off and it was a dude. Uh, <laughs> I know, right? I don't Fucking... get furries. Just some, uh... I wish someone would explain it to me. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it, well, I don't know. I mean, it's 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 a, uh... I try to be open, but I, I just don't get that. One. Well, I'm an open person. You can do whatever you want to do, but yeah. I mean... You know, it's just like bondage. I don't really get that. Either. I don't get that either. I mean, I I know how awesome it is to tie a chick up and just leave her, but <laughs> I don't really get. I do that in home break-ins, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But like, but that's usually entire families. <laughs> well, you know, well you don't want to, you know, segregate. Yeah. But like, I I don't I don't understand what sexual pleasure you get out of. No, this I don't either. I'm a meat and potatoes type of guy, I guess. I guess we'll have to try a furry weekend when we can find out. Oh, God. I'm kidding. I can't wait to find one and have one on the interview. <laughs> but, like, uh... Yeah, I would like that. I would actually interview I think that would be to, sweet. To explain it to us. Not, I wouldn't make fun of them. I would make fun of them. Oh, yeah, I would. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, I, I'm a type of person that I believe that you can't take yourself too goddamn seriously because that's when you run into... Problems like there's not enough women creating apps that deal with children's <laughs> education. Like, people take themselves way too fucking seriously in this world. Yeah. And I think that's part of the problem with most of the things going on. Like, I know I'm going to come off as being a bigot and I'm going to come off as being an asshole, and that's fine. Everybody thinks I am. But at the, at the end of the day, I think everybody should be allowed to say what they want. And deal with the consequences of it. I mean, if you're going to walk down the street dropping N-bombs, you're going to get your ass beat. And that's why you don't do it. If you're going to walk down the street, you know, screaming fag, well, a lot of gay guys are going to cry. And that's not cool either because there's a lot of them that are a hell of a lot more fit than I'm ever going to be. And yeah. they're going to kick your ass too. <laughs> I even knew, uh, you yeah, remember this story, that we knew a Navy SEAL that was gay who and if they ever found out, they would they would have kicked him out of the seals. Who is that? Don't say his name. Who is that? I'm not going to... Not to me. I don't, we remember, knew somebody I don't like remember his name. But we knew someone that was dating him. Oh. Oh. No. No? I'm not... I'll tell you later. 
He knew him. He just dated him once. We, I think we met. Uh, I met him a couple times. I think you met him once. So that maybe that's why you don't remember him. Oh, uh, probably not. Well, he went through so many boyfriends. True. Well, that, he was a friend boyfriend sort of thing. A hookup. He was a girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> girlfriend. He was a guy you'd call when he was lonely. Oh wow. Well, that's pretty badass. Mm -hmm. I got no complaints about that. That's kind of cool. Yeah, <laughs> damn right. I ain't got none of those. I have a Navy SEAL booty call. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. But, I mean, I think that people should be allowed to do what they want to do. I mean, you don't call somebody the N-word in fucking Compton. Just like, you know. I don't know, think you call them that anywhere. Well, whatever. But you don't call a white guy a cracker in Mississippi. I think you can call a white guy a cracker anywhere. That, that term, misses it off your black guy. That term's not offensive to anyone. It should be. We should be just as upset about that. It should be the C word. Because that way everybody will confuse it with cunt and it'll make <laughs> me happy. <laughs> and he called him the C word. Why is he calling him a cunt? <laughs> or else we should come up with another N word. To make that even more fun, too. <laughs> Nunt. <laughs> so we're calling white people nunts now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't know. Jesus Christ. Who gives a shit? I mean, we we do have... What is it, the First Amendment? Freedom of speech? One of them. What, a, what the fuck was that? That was a balloon. I was testing it. A balloon? <laughs> I got a whole section for you're balloons. You're testing balloon noises? <laughs> <laughs> We're having a wonderful racial discussion here, and you're testing out balloon noise. I can do both. <laughs> but I was curious. Well, that goes back into the furries. How curious are you? I'm not that curious. <laughs> and those suits, from what I understand, are pretty fucking expensive because they have to be like lined with uh, uh, monkey fur. <laughs> no, they have to be lined with. Uh, uh, like, it's like the rubber or something, don't they? So the, I don't know. I just assume they're like the suits we used to rent out at the, the costume store we worked at. No, because well, <laughs> that's I mean, what I assume. Yeah, but if you're gonna be if you're gonna be a person in that world, you're gonna want to have to have an easier way to clean it. I imagine. <laughs> what the fuck is that? That's the frog. <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> Pete. I mean, you're gonna have to have an easy way to clean that thing, cause that's your, that's like your condom, that's your sex suit, man. When you wear a condom, not if you're inside of a giant fucking furry suit, unless you're gonna have your cock hanging out. That's what I figured happened, or do they have furry? I don't know. <laughs> We're really gonna have to get into this fucking furry thing. I don't know if I really out. want to. Why not? <laughs> I don't know. Now see. <laughs> I think that would be a great furry outfit. <laughs> to dress up as a cow and have your cock be one of the other nipples. <laughs> that way if you get a whole bunch of people like <laughs> sucking on your fake udder, somebody's gonna get a surprise at the end. <laughs> Plus you can have like talk about fucking multiple sexual partners, man. You can have like at least what, four people sucking on those things. Yeah, but you're only gonna get pleasure from one. How many of them do you need to get pleasure from? I don't, I don't know about you, but I only got one guy. <laughs> if I had four, that would be the perfect outfit. <laughs> but I don't. <laughs> Ugh. Another thing we could talk about, plastic surgery. But, uh... <laughs> hey, if anyone out there wants to talk to us, leave it in the comment section with some information. Yes, please, please. If you're a furry out there, please get... <laughs> Communicate it was very, with us. kind of thick skin because we are going to make fun. But we're also interested. Oh, definitely interested. Uh, well, I mean... Well, not trying. Define interested. I, I'm curious because I, I don't understand it myself. Dennis is furry curious. <laughs> I just want to make fun of you. But not in, a, not in a harsh, you know, bad way. Nobody's gonna come, nobody's gonna contact no. us with that fucking comment. No, <laughs> fucking, you know, fuck you. If you got some balls, be a fucking wolf. Or 
Yeah. <laughs> or a female. You don't have to have balls. Oh, definitely. Man, if you're a chick out there that's into this furry shit, please contact us. Uh, I don't know. What, what are we going to wind up using for, like, uh, multimedia correspondence? Are we going to do, like, email, egocast, underscore Andy, Twitter account. egocast, underscore Dennis at We should do a Twitter or something account. like that. Well, yeah, but, I mean, do you want to do, like, because I want to have my own. You want to have your own. Do, do you want to do, like, egocast, underscore Andy at Twitter? Sure. Like, have that. We'll see if we can make that work. Uh, if that doesn't work, uh, most likely what you're going to be watching right now as you're watching this is going to be a still a, some sort of picture of something that's going to have our uh, communicative whatever on it. <laughs> I'm sure we'll have a YouTube page and all that. Bell noises. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so what do you want to talk about? There was, there's two for me. I just want to make fun of the Browns. That's you want to make fun of the Browns? All right, well let's make fun of the Browns because that'll go into another one of my uh, another one of my stories. So what is your what is your? I mean, obviously the Browns are an easy fucking target. So oh, it's really easy. But I just think it's funny they cut out Brandon Whedon, their franchise quarterback, who have. who has a marvelous shovel pass. He only used it a couple of times during the season, but I gotta yeah. tell you, that was that was a big reason why I think they lost most of their games. But yeah. <laughs> well well they release him and then Dallas picks him up and I'm reading it. Dallas right. picked him up. Yeah, the, and they're picking him up as he's the in between he, they're gonna use him as the in between quarterback after Roma retires. Well they 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 drafted Whedon. Yeah. And he was what, like forty five or something <laughs> like that? Twenty eight. This is after he played baseball and decided he couldn't make it in baseball and went back to college and play, I think played for Wisconsin. Well, he so he was what, 28? Yeah. Well, that's not as old as everybody was making it sound like. Uh, for quarterbacks, it's kind of old because they don't last that long. Not all of them Brett Favre, who plays well, for 97 years. Yeah, Brett Favre is like, what, 45? Something like Thinking that. Thinking about coming back out of retirement probably. He's got a small junk. I know that. <laughs> I don't know that. <laughs> well, the well, allegedly he has a small junk. I like that. Allegedly, we can say anything we want as long as it's allegedly. Dennis is allegedly homosexual. Um. So. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> nice shrug. <laughs> but Dennis is allegedly very curious in the furry community, thinking about what what animal would you be. I'd have to be a bear, I guess. A big old bear. Yeah, you would be a big old bear. I'd also be bear. a bear in the gay community, too. Yes, you would. <laughs> big fucking bear. Get yourself a bunch of little cubs thrown around you. <laughs> Go fetch me drinks. <laughs> <laughs> when are we going to do the, the, the gay bar show so that you can fucking... I don't care. I don't mind hanging out in gay bar. I get free drinks that way, usually. I don't. <laughs> I went there once, and I just had fun dancing. I don't even dance. I just sit at the bar. Well, it's because you don't dance. <laughs> <laughs> I dance, and that's the only place. Honestly, like, that's the that's the fucking the cool thing about gay bars is it's the only place where you can go and just dance. I like how we transitioned Brad. Brad I know. Okay, 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 okay. It's back for <laughs> Whedon. Sorry. But like I was saying, like they're <laughs> using him as a transition quarterback between when they uh, get another quarterback. They want to get a young quarterback so they can, he can learn behind him. So, so he's going to learn from Tony Romo. Yes. Well, the, okay, my point that I was making, they drafted him, and then they just threw him fucking out there. After three years. Three years? They actually did have him for three years? Well, well this would be the third year, I think. Well, yeah. who did he learn under? Whedon? Yeah. No one. They made him the starting quarterback day one. So they draft him and immediately throw him out there. Yeah. A college player. They always do that, the Browns. Well, that's fucking stupid. Well, that's something. why he's doing a fucking underhanded flip shovel pass like he's fucking... Some know, college stupid. kids can do it, though. Name one. Andy Dalton. <laughs> well, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but Andy Dalton's a goddamn prodigy. Uh, and he had a shitty first year, kind of. He got them all the way to the playoffs their first year. And that was a shitty fucking year. <laughs> they should have gotten that goddamn Super Bowl. For anybody who's just listening to us, I am a Bengals fan. <laughs> Who day? Um, well, speaking of that, the 
the Bengals got the other quarterback from the Browns that they released. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Campbell. Uh, Campbell. So, anyways, going back to we'll go. We'll hit that in a second because that's my that's going into my article. Okay. But uh, 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 so Whedon gets picked up by Dallas mm-hmm. to learn under Tony Romo. Yeah. For backup. Well, he's but nevertheless, he's going to be learning. He's going to be learning from a veteran quarterback, a fucking great quarterback. Is he? Is he even going to go where? Actually, he is a quarterback. He's, a quarterback, he's not I mean. good in clutch, in my opinion. Well, nevertheless, he he fucking has played. He's a starter. Yeah, he's gotten you know through a lot of playoffs. Or... Yeah, so he's going to learn from somebody for X amount of years, and then he's going to be thrown out there as a starter mm-hmm. for. A year or two, yeah. While he trains the next guy down, right. Well, that sounds intelligent. <laughs> Very. So why did the Browns do that? Browns, they just draft quarterbacks and destroy them. Well, well, uh, going back to like when they had Derek Anderson. <laughs> yeah. I forget who was who was starting, and he got hurt. And the couch, like, couch probably. Thing. And then uh, like, oh, let's put Aaron Anderson. No, they, all their quarterbacks got hurt. And they're like, let's put Derek Anderson out and see what he does. Throws like eight touchdowns in one game. And they're like, where the hell's this guy been sitting? Why has he been sitting on the bench for two years? Well, isn't that that's what happened with the uh, with the Browns quarterback they have now? Fucking what's his name? Hoyer. Hoyer. He was third string, wasn't yeah. he? And then Whedon got hurt, and they threw him out there, Campbell and he got fucking hurt. turned into a badass. And then... Which is why he's still on the team. Which is why he's still on the team. But he got hurt after fucking two, one game, yeah. two games, three games. So, and then they just had a fucking comedy of errors every game after that. Yeah. But I just can't follow that Browns anymore. I mean, I used to be a big Browns fan. It just every year got harder and harder until the point I'm like, I gave up. That's why I'm a Bengals fan. Well, that and my grandmother was a Bengals fan, so... That and... Boomer got them to at least one Super Bowl. Yeah, and Boomer Science is a badass motherfucker. <laughs> but, uh... Or was. Right now he's just... He's still badass. Talking head. Eh, I don't know. I mean, if you can go through life with the name Boomer, I mean, you made it. Oh, wow. Well, it's a cool name. <laughs> sort of. But, so... And then they gave up with the Campbell. They cut his ass. And then the Bengals pick him up. Yeah. Now, what is his role going to be behind... He's uh, he's as backup to Dalton from what I read, and he's gonna teach him. Cause it seems like when he gets in the playoffs, Dalton doesn't have a lot of experience. Well, he does now. Campbell. Well, I mean that's pretty fucking relative. Yeah. Who has experience in playoffs? Yeah. Uh, people that are on teams that have been to the playoffs. Yeah. It's tough to learn that experience without being there, and they've been there. Dalton's been there twice. Yeah. He's been there every year he's played. Yeah. So. That's pretty fucking badass. But it's good having a veteran quarterback who's your backup yelling in your ear during the game. Just Campbell, a veteran quarterback. Oh, yeah. He's played like eight years. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Hmm. So. Everywhere I read that everyone's saying Campbell's a great quarterback, he just never made it as a starter. Yeah. It seems like no one's really given him a chance. Well, that's pretty awesome. Um. In another article. Uh, this I is, just hope we didn't win the Super Bowl now. <laughs> it seems like every time they say Browns quarterback to Dallas, they win the Super Bowl. Or move the whole team somewhere else. How many years did it take before the I think they won it the more? first year. Yeah, something like that. that was Cozart, awesome. after they cut Cozart, he they sent him to Dallas, he got a Super Bowl. Right? Yeah, yeah. But okay, so out of CincyJungle.com, why the Cincinnati Bengals won't pursue Deshaun Jackson? Uh, when the Philadelphia 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 Eagles released wide receiver Deshaun Jackson on Friday, it sent a sonic boom throughout the NFL community. Not just because a talented player was suddenly available on the market, that happens, rather because a report surfaced that Jackson had gang affiliations, according to the report published at <laughs> NJ.com, which wrote, in part, then suddenly, the Eagles had even more serious concerns when they were revealed by NJ.com Jackson's continued association with reputed Los Angeles street gang members who have been connected to two homicides since 2010. <laughs> Where's the car noises? 
Uh, obviously, the NFL has a hypersensitivity with players affiliated with gangs since former Patriots tight end Aaron Hernandez has been indicted with first-degree murder for the killing of Odin Lloyd. He's also connected to a double homicide in Boston. Roughly an hour after the report was released, uh, the Philadelphia Eagles released Jackson. Yes, the timing stinks to us also. Well, an hour after the report was released. I read that wrong before in the prep. Jesus. An hour after the fucking they say that this guy's in gangs, yeah. they release him. Why does the timing of that suck? What is wrong with the timing of that? If somebody's, you know, you release him. You gotta go through lawyers and stuff. Like I said that before. Yeah, but fuck. You gotta make sure he won't sue the team or something for releasing them. How can he sue? I'm sure it's worked into his contract that you can be fucking released if you. They have those uh, morality clauses. If you're doing shit that's bad, you get cut. That's the way it goes. So I don't think he's got a leg to stand on if he tries to sue him for anything. Uh, the Eagles, who have been trying to find a partner to trade to trade Jackson and Orlando this week, failed to convince some someone to carry his 10.5 million price tag in 2014 and double-digit cap numbers for the next three seasons. Once the damaging report surfaced on Friday, allowing the Eagles, who clearly knew everything in the report well beforehand, uh, they were asked about it throughout the report, an excuse to release Jackson, they pulled the trigger. Jackson disputed the report, obviously. He says, I would like to address the misleading and unf un unfounded reports that my release has anything to do with any affiliation that has been speculated surrounding the company I keep off the field. Which is fucked up. I mean, when you're on the field, fine. But when you're off the field, you should be able to have a personal life. I'm not saying that he should be allowed to murder people, but I'm saying... You want to hang out with people that are your friends. Yeah, as long as you don't end up in the newspaper about it. Exactly. Uh, Jackson said that in a statement, I would like to make it very clear that I am not and never have been part of any gang. I am not a gang member, and to speculate and assume that I am involved in such activity off the field is reckless and irresponsible. I work very hard on and off the field, and I am a good person with good values. I am proud of the accomplishments that I have made both on and off the field. I have worked tirelessly to give back to my community and have a positive impact on those in need. It is unfortunate that I now have to defend myself and my intentions. These reports are irresponsible and just not true. And fucking honestly, they may not be true. I mean, just because you hang out with somebody that's in a gang. I know people that were in gangs. <laughs> I know people that were in gangs. Does that mean that I'm part of a gang? I work with guys that have been in gangs or knew people or have cousins, brothers, whatever. That are in gangs? We were in a militia once. What? You don't know about that? What the fuck are you talking about? Dagger hair was actually considered... They oh, had to put on in the militia for the, when they set up the yeah, non-profit thing. Because they used to bake weapons and stuff. It's, it, that's the way it was set up. They had to do it that way. Yeah, well, whatever. I mean, it, it was combat training. Yeah. No matter how you want to look at it. Uh, Monty Poole with CSNBayArea.com revisited an experience that he had... Joining Dasan and his brother Brian in 2011 to San Quentin Prison. Huh. Deshaun was tremendous, speaking with authority and clarity about his own experience in Los Angeles, talking about friends he had lost to prison or death as a result of the gang lifestyle. He told me he saw a lot of people at the queue who grew up as he did, navigating violent streets and hoping to survive. Some did, others did not. Dasan said that he always looked to his brother, Byron, shit, said his name wrong for Byron. Byron Jackson. Why does it say Brian up there? Byron down here. Whatever. And had a brief NFL career and their father for guidance. In fact, it wasn't so much the gang affiliation why the Eagles released Jackson. That's just the hot topic topic that carries the most interest. Per the original NJ.com report, rather, sources close to Jackson within the Eagles organization say it originally was Jackson's off-field behavior that concerned the front office. A bad attitude, an inconsistent work ethic, missed meetings, and a lack of chemistry with head coach Chip Kelly were the original reasons for his fall from grace, sources told NJ.com. 
and when the Eagles looked more deeply into why Jackson was missing meetings, they found out that his friends were becoming a more powerful and negative influence in his life. So, well, then fuck it. It doesn't have anything to do with his gang affiliations. Wait. It has to do with the fact that he's missing fucking meetings and shit. Wait a minute. So, the uh, looking at one point of view, the Eagles have problems with the gang stuff, supposedly. I think that, I think what it is, I think what what this is going towards is that Deshaun Jackson had a bad attitude, an inconsistent work ethic, missed meetings, and a lack of chemistry with the head coach. And that's what they're saying is the reason why they cut him. But then it comes out, they probably figured out, oh shit, they're going to cut me because I'm not doing my job, allegedly. And... Now, let's put out a report that says I hang out with gang members so that when they cut me, now I can sue them because eh, it seems like that's the way this is fucking going. But then they also had uh, Michael Vick. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? It's supposed to have been a dog. <laughs> but they have no problem with Michael Vick and his dog stuff. Well, they did have a problem with that, and he served his fucking term for that shit. He went to prison for that, didn't he? Yeah. <laughs> and so that was a fucking problem. And he's playing. Not for the now. Eagles. They, they let him play. Yeah. They have they have problems with gangs, but they don't care about dog fights. Oh, fucking who gives a shit about that? They're fucking animals. Man, if I buy a couch, I should be able to sit on it when I want or burn it to the fucking ground if that is my inclination. It's my fucking couch. Well, Just because do... it's a dog shouldn't make any fucking difference. It's his goddamn dog. If he wants to fucking fight it, fuck it, eat it, who gives a shit? It's his fucking dog. As long as he's not doing it, you know, in public. Yet again, it goes back to the personal life thing. Why can't people have personal fucking lives? Dennis, it's answer the question. living thing. So what? You don't treat so are fucking like cows, and they electrocute those motherfuckers, and they feed them to too. you. Why? You shouldn't be tortured. It's a dog! No, I'm not advocating the torture of animals, <laughs> but I'm just like saying that. it's property. When it all comes down to you, you buy it. It's my dog. And I, being the person that I am, feel that a dog should be something that I should treat well. Other people want to stick them in a pit with another dog and have those dogs kill each other. And other people want to gamble on which one's going to live. <laughs> I don't see anything fucking wrong with that. I've got a fish sitting right next to me. Not my fish, my girlfriend's fish, but nevertheless, there's a fish sitting right next to me. If I want to pull him out of that fucking water jug, and throw him on the ground and watch him die. It's a fish. Who cares? Cook him up and eat him. There's not much on him. But, <laughs> nevertheless, I mean, fucking, was it a Steve-O swallowed a fish and then puked it back up. Where was the giant fucking, why didn't he go to prison for that? I don't know. <laughs> People use animals in stupid fucking ways all the time. But nevertheless, at the end of the day, they're animals. The good Lord gave us dominion over all the beasts of the air, sea, and land. He didn't say torture them. Well, I'm not advocating the torture of them. I Sounds mean, in, like it. In, <laughs> in Rome, they put humans in fucking pits and had them fight with each other, and people bet on who'd win. That's different. We're allowed to do it to each other. <laughs> this is not Rome anymore. Fuck PETA. Well, I understand that, but in modern day, they stick people in cages and let them fight with each other. Yeah, I think that's wrong. You think the fucking UFC is wrong. All right, that's different. <laughs> no. That's a sport. So is dog fighting. No, it's not. So is cock fighting. All right, do they kill the UFC fighter afterwards when he loses? No. no. They should. It would make for more entertaining <laughs> fights. <laughs> Anyways, going back to this fucking thing. You idiot. <laughs> As 
As of this posting, the Kansas City Chiefs, New York Jets, and Oakland Raiders are pursuing him, and as many as six teams have expressed some level of interest. The About? Bengals aren't known to be one, but we're going to list them as doubtful. No, fuck that. What? They, they got enough criminals on Yeah, I know. <laughs> Along with the obvious that negotiations with so many teams Allegedly. will increase his money value, the Bengals want nothing to do with troubled players anymore, unlike their theory years ago, back when their whole defensive line was in jail. Uh, head coach Marvin Lewis told Yahoo Sports last summer that uh, you told Yahoo Sports. Man, I hate the fucking Yahoo punctuation. It makes me think the sentence is ended. Uh, head coach Marvin Lewis told Yahoo Sports last summer that the term is focused on drafting players that focus more on character rather than reaching for talent. Which is another problem with the Bengals. <laughs> he absolutely. Oh, this is the quote now. He absolutely had to have guys he could count on. This from a team that not only drafted the late Chris Henry, but re-signed him even after a slew of arrests. I don't think Chris Henry we would pick today, Lewis said. Uh, see, Chris had social issues at the time of the draft, but he hadn't really gotten into legal issues. Chris would have a harder time today just because he would be more sketchy on if he could handle the day-to-day -day of being a good teammate. I think there was always a feeling that boys will be boys, Lewis continued. There are some boys that just can't get over being boys, and unfortunately, the organization had to learn that. Which is true. The fuck is that? I don't know. It's just been a football. <laughs> there we go. Even more to the point, Bengals owner Mike Brown talked specifically about character concerns. Once upon a time, we drafted with character as a big part of the judgment, Brown said via NBC Sports last December. And then we played a team, without naming that team, <laughs> and they used to knock our socks off. They were playing with guys who we thought were, in some ways, I won't say reprehensible, but they were certainly, in our minds, questionable. Of course, that might not have been fair. After all, they were beating us pretty good. But, well, we said, if they're beating us doing that, we better do it too. We tried that for a while. I think we had an unfortunate run of mishaps with guys that went off the track. They were only a very small part of the overall, but they were the biggest part of our image, and it hurts us. Remember, even if the phrase gang affiliations wasn't mentioned, we're still talking about a player in Jackson that routinely missed meetings who had a bad attitude. Maybe it's just a situation in Philadelphia, an irreconcilable marriage that would have dissolved if Jack and Jackson finds a change of scenery. Who knows? In the end, why would Cincinnati risk it after spending so many years building a character-based roster? They have A.J. Green, the polar opposite of Chad Johnson, and Marvin Jones, who scored more offensive touchdowns than Jackson last season. Jackson is a talent player and will find an eventual home. It just doesn't appear like it'll be in Cincinnati. And I mean, like, that's kind of a fucked up thing because they do still have Pac-Man. But Pac-Man has calmed down. Has calmed down a lot. So who knows? Maybe I forgot he was even on the team. Yeah, maybe Cincinnati is just the type of environment that kind of breeds a more Mature? Mature, yeah, mature way of looking at things. I don't know. I think get rid of Chad Johnson was still stupid. Well, it got to the point where every time Ocho Senko would get out on the fucking field, <laughs> they would, fuck you, they would uh, just they double, triple team him. You know, that was when they got, uh, 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 shit, uh, the other big fucking running back that they got, uh, uh, the last season that they had Johnson. I don't remember. Son of a bitch. I need you to fucking pick up on this shit. Um, you want me to look it Terrell up? Owens. When they got T.O., what the fuck was that? Nothing. <laughs> when they got Terrell Owens. You said running back. He's a wide receiver. Wide receiver, yeah. <laughs> That's why I didn't get it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> when they got uh, Terrell Owens, <clears throat> he was fucking badass because then they would either have to block Terrell Owens or they would have to block Chad Johnson or they would have to double team him and then they could throw to somebody else. But that was back when they were doing mostly the running game with fucking Cedric Benson and shit like that anyways. So, I mean, Chad's an amazing player. Too bad he's not playing anymore. Chad was an amazing player. But it got to the point where ever, he was the only fucking weapon downfield. It's easy to shut down your passing game when you've only got one guy that can really receive and run. Uh, 
Anything else? Uh, about what? Do you have anything else to talk about? Other part of the show. Uh, didn't I say I wanted to talk about something? I already forgot what Yeah, you wanted to talk about the Browns. No, besides that. I don't know. I know I have one more thing to talk about. Uh, uh. Alright, so earlier in this week, <clears throat> I had an issue that came up at my work. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. So. I'm sure it was your, uh, not your fault. <laughs> it was, it, it was not my fault. <laughs> Fuck you. It had to do with HR, and I understand why everybody would think it was my fault, especially during the earlier portions of the show. <laughs> but what happened was, is that I work in a warehouse. We have a tow motor. I was backing up, setting up a machine to run, and I tripped over the forks of the tow motor. Okay. Fell on my ass, <laughs> fell on my wrist, you know, broke my fall, obviously, with my hand. And, you know, when you when you fall and you fucking break your fall and you get that, that stinger in your hand where your hand goes numb and your wrist hurts yeah but it's not anything major and in 20 minutes it goes away because it's just the impact yeah pain from it i walked into the office i was fucking pissed off and in the office unfortunately and i'll never make this fucking mistake again was the hr person i'll say person because if i say lady then i'll probably get in trouble for that so the hr person was in the office and she said, what happened? And I said, oh, I fell. So she comes and looks at my wrist, like, looking at it and shit. And I'm like, fucking get off me. Like, don't touch me. You don't fucking, what are you, a doctor? No, you're a fucking HR person. So she's looking at it, and she's like, oh, I don't think you need to go to the hospital or anything. And I'm like, no, of course I don't need to go to the hospital or anything. She's like, you still need to write up an incident report. And I'm like, why? It's not an incident. I don't think that tripping and falling <laughs> is an incident. Like, I don't... Uh, so they forced me to write up an incident report. And you know me. So the, the incident report was classic. I wish I would have gotten a copy of it so that I could fucking read it here. But it was like, you know, what happened? And I said, tripped, fell. <laughs> was there an injury? No. Or it was like, date of injury, and I put not applicable. Time of injury, not applicable. You know, that big N slash A. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, it was just stupid because they made me fill out this shit, and I wasted an hour of my day, which now my production, an hour of it gone, because I have to write up a fucking thing, and I had to get my boss to fill out a thing. My boss, who didn't see it, by the way, had no idea anything that went on, and she wrote down fucking 20 times more than I did because she's a good employee and I'm, <laughs> I'm not. <laughs> and then I had to go and find the other person that was there. And I had to have them fill out a thing. And, of course, he wrote more than I did, too. <laughs> and, I mean, it was just, it was ridiculous. And the, the thing that pissed me off the most is I'm the one that supposedly just had an incident. I'm the one that supposedly hurt. Yet I'm going around to get all of the paperwork done. <laughs> Why didn't the fucking HR chick person do all of the paperwork? Isn't that her job? Why is it my job to get all this shit filled out? And she told me, she's like, you got to go and get a, an incident report packet and fill it out. And I'm like, bitch, fucking, really? I have to go and get this shit, and I have to fill it out. Why don't you go get the <laughs> shit, and you come fucking ask me questions? You fucking fill it out. You should have said you're hurt. Why? So you could have just sat there with ice on your wrist, no, and she could have done it. Yeah, give me my broom to push. That's what happens when people get hurt at my work. They give them a broom and they just wander around pushing a fucking broom for hours. Fucking stupid. Anyways. I don't know. I thought that would be more than that. It probably <laughs> would have been fucking... If it would have been last week when it really happened. Just fucking... Oh, yeah, that chick. Oh, yeah. Paulina Gretzky. <laughs> fucking looks hot as hell. Little golf hole. I didn't know golf could be so sexy. Golf is fucking hot. I wonder if she's fucked Tiger Woods. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we're hitting our hour mark. Do you have anything else for this week's show? No, I can save it for the next week. Okay. Uh, neither do I. So, from Dennis and me here at EgoCast, thank you very much for listening. Bye-bye. Uh, Burn yeah. in hell. <laughs> Burn in hell. <laughs>